Wow, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today I'm going over three branding elements that play significant parts in Chief Keef's rise to success. Meteoric rise at that. And y'all can thank KD Black for this video. Appreciate you asking, bruh. So let's get to number one. Chief Keef had a unique style and flow. I think that's pretty obvious for the people who heard him during that age before people started copying and things like that. But that whole so so yeah, da, da, da. that sort of mumble and even his style of mumble is different from most people's style of mumble. And he didn't always rap that way, by the way. You ask me what the money, I say he gon' die red. Talking his dick, if she snitch, she can get 30 clip. I decide that's that shit I don't like. No. So when he changed to that style, it really helped him cut through the noise. Number two, his hardcore street persona. And I know a lot of people are like, how could that really differentiate Chief Keef? How could that make him different? Well, what a lot of people underestimate is the fact that thugs don't exist to the extent, or gangsters, or street people, or whatever you want to call them, they don't really exist in hip hop to the extent they used to. Nowhere near. People underestimate the takeover of the backpack, or I'm weird, or I'm so different, or I'm artsy, or I'm hippie type rappers since Kanye West has really started that wave back in the early 2000s. The hardcore thug thing doesn't really exist anymore, and even when you see a lot of them, they will be so fake and they will be so, you know, made up and done up. His was so raw where you're like, this dude, he really don't care. He don't even know better that he should be flashy or have all these jewels. This is just straight authentic and genuine when you're watching those first videos of Chief Keef. And him being in the streets, I can't forget to mention that he really started to create a wave and bubble locally at first, which actually makes for a great launch pad for a career once people on the outside start to discover you, specifically if it's through the internet and just other general media. And those elements alone actually, in most normal cases, would explain someone who blows up in the game and becomes popular and gets a wave or attention for a certain period of time, but they don't account for Chief Keith's media auric rise that he had so much and so suddenly as it seemed. And what the cause of that was, Guess? Guess? No? Chicago. Chief Keef's rise got accelerated and amplified because he was from Chicago in a time where Chicago as a whole was trending nationally on news. It was starting to be branded as one of the most dangerous places in the United States. News outside of music completely, just regular news networks. So you got the city getting attention and then when you have this guy who comes and starts to get attention himself alone, but he's coming from this lifestyle that's representative of what is already getting attention, the type of danger and things that's getting attention from the city, he becomes a poster boy. So now when you hear danger and violence and people getting shot in Chicago, the people from the outside of Chicago who aren't fully so familiar, which is most people, right? Most people in the world aren't from Chicago. They start to think, Chief Keef when they hear Chicago. They'll hear Chicago, then then they'll think danger, then they'll think Chief Keef. And then when people hear Chief Keef, they think, hey, Chicago. So now you have these mental associations, which is so powerful in marketing and branding. If you can position yourself next to something that's already trending or take responsibility of something that has legs on its own, that's getting pushed as a concept, and you become a poster boy or girl for whatever that vibe and wave is, you're getting a lot of work done for you with very little effort because yes, you spend time marketing and pushing yourself, but that other thing is already creating conversation, which by association creates conversation for you. And that's a huge thing that, you know, it was kind of just timing. You really couldn't have planned it to happen for Chief Keith that way. So, you know, sometimes we have those luck of a draw once in a lifetime situations. It's not that he didn't have what it took to blow up, but to blow up to that scale was like, 50 cent level of not only am I a street dude and rapping, but now I get shot nine times and survive and now I'm coming out with more music. It's like, oh, you really are from that lifestyle. Chief Keep is similarly like, oh, not only is this like the worst city and they already and they're always putting like, hey, 600 people died in this span of time and 30 people died in this span of time. Well, I'm from that lifestyle. So it's real, 
real real and people are attracted to things that seem real and dangerous when it comes to that specific type of brand anyway please share this if you found it helpful in any kind of way and you know what to do hit that subscribe button